Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar by Facility Management Tech Tips, Get Ready for the Next Decade. This is Indira Farah from the Arc Facilities Marketing Department. Before I introduce today's speaker, I want to let everyone know that today's, today's event will include a live Q&A session. So as you think of your questions, go ahead and submit those into the Q&A panel in the right-hand side of your screen. And be sure to send to all panelists. We'll be answering as many questions as time permits, and if we don't get to all of them, we'll make sure to follow up individually. Our speaker today is David Trask, and David is our National Director here at Arc Facilities. David is a na nationwide facilities management consultant advising facilities teams on productivity tools and uh, to lower costs and risks, and he is a frequent speaker at a variety of national industry events and conferences, so uh, we're really excited to have David speaking today. And on the agenda for the next uh, half hour, David's going to be going over the top five tech tips, and he'll do a nice quick demo of our solution, and you guys will have uh, the opportunity to ask those questions, so start typing them in as soon as you can think of those questions. And then we'll wrap up. So, David, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. Great. Thanks, Adira. And welcome, everyone. I know these are, these are troubling times that we're in right now, and uh, hopefully you're all safe and secure in your homes. But what we're going to talk about today, again, is five things that you should do to really prepare for the future. So technology is really changing the way we're doing and, and managing our lives today. Uh, I, I was just uh, thinking about yesterday. Uh, I was on the, the phone with one of my daughter's teachers, and they were sending over some, some different uh, projects for her to work on over the break. And, and I'm getting news alerts on my phone and, of course, on TV. But, but I was also sharing information with my team and running a lot of these types of meetings where we were doing FaceTime and, and uh, Ring Central and some other, other meetings where we're communicating even though we're all at home. That's where we're at today. And that's how quickly our lives have changed. You know, in, in the last couple of weeks, we've, we've all become accustomed to working at home. For, for better or for worse, we're doing it. We have to. So think about how quickly technology has changed our lives, even in the near term. Well, th there's no exception for in the facilities world. You know, think about you're, you're now working from home. And you still have to manage your buildings. Well, part of your team is working from home, and you still have to manage your buildings. And if you're a hospital, that's even more important today. So it is evolving, and you've got to be prepared. So let's talk about these tips, and let's go ahead and jump in. So tip number one is digitize all your critical building information. Look at that picture. Look at all of those rolls of blueprints. Look at all of those plans, all those projects that you've worked on over the years, all those tags that are hanging from all those. That's how a lot of folks are still accessing their information. Well, here's the challenge with that. Is that shareable? You're at home today. Those drawings are in your office. So sharing paper information isn't convenient, and it also is really time consuming. Who knows which bin or which cubby those particular plans are that you need to manage your building. But what's in your pocket right now? What's sitting next to your computer or next to your iPad right now? Your phone. You should be able to get access to all of your information on your phone. Digital information is easily shared, and you can make decisions faster. Well, it also is searchable. So think about that right now. These three photos right here, I think, are, are perfect how it sums this up. On the left, you've got that paper mess that we were talking about. But we've also got, you've got the guy in the middle who's up on that roof. He's going to check on that AC unit. Well, how many times is he having to climb off of that roof, go back down to that room on the left, and try and find stuff to do his job, try to find information, try and find that O&M for that particular machine? Back and forth, back and forth, multiple times, four, five, ten times a day, going back and forth, trying to find stuff to do my job, okay? There's a better way. You can search and access that information on your phone. It's all cloud-based, so everything is, is available on your phone today. Everybody's got a smartphone. You should be able to access all of your information on your phone today. But it also is protected. So I was in, actually in a, in a client meeting a couple of weeks ago, 
and uh, we were in the plan room that was very similar to the one on the left there, and a pipe burst in the room right next door to that room. It was a 10-inch water pipe in the next room. Imagine if that would have burst over that room. Think about that. All that stuff would have been ruined. It all would have been trashed. Or, even more importantly, you've got the folks in the middle, the guy in the middle here that just walked out of your office with a set of plans and didn't put it back in one of those cubbies or didn't put it back where it was supposed to go. But then you've also got blueprints, for, especially for some older buildings, where you've got old mylar or old blue lines that are just shredded. They're not getting any better year over year. So it's critically important that you get all of that stuff digital now. Scan that stuff in, get it digital so you can access it. Well, tip number two is getting your information digital is part of it, but it also, again, has to be mobile. So that gives you that instant access. So think about today. You're sitting at home this week, last week, and what apps did you use? What are some of the things that you used on your phone? Did you order anything? I ordered food last night, takeout. They dropped it off on my front porch. The week before, I ordered groceries, and they picked it up. My wife went and picked it up at the store because they have those pickup lanes now at, at Target and our, our local uh, Fred Meyer. I'm on the West Coast. So again, you're, I'm using mobile apps all the time. Well, again, imagine if something happens in your building while you're away. You, you should be able to access your building information just like you do any of the apps that you use today. So why is facilities, why should facilities be any different? It shouldn't. You should be able to access your building information just like you access any other thing that you need to do in your day-to-day -day life. It's not, it's not rocket science. But when it's an emergency, that's where it becomes even more important for you to be able to access that stuff wherever the heck you are. So the, the, think about the water pipe burst that I've mentioned. That's on the left there. Well, if you've got a fire in your building and you've got a you know, hurricane or, or something going on that affects your buildings and you're at home, you should be able to access that information and get it in the hands of who the heck needs it, who's on site, so that you can get get out of bed, get dressed, get in your car and drive that half hour drive or however long it is to get to your building. But you should be able to access it wherever you are, whether you're standing in the building or you're at home or you're on vacation, accessing it wherever you are. Well, it also is a big waste of time when you're using paper. So think about how many hours you're spending digging through those, those drawings, digging through those O&Ms. Do I even have the right drawing? Do I have the right O&M? Do I have the right closeout package? It's a giant waste of time. But also, how many times is that guy or gal climbing off that roof? How many times are they running back and forth? I was actually uh, at that same client a few weeks ago, and our escort, we were fo shooting photos of all their shutoff valves in, the, uh, in their, their hospital. And the lady who was our escort was actually uh, got called away four or five times in the first hour that we were there because they were having a challenge with one of the uh, trying to find one of the electrical panels. She knew where it was, so she immediately went over there. But that's what I'm talking about. 15 minutes over there, 15 minutes back. It's not a matter of just knowing where this stuff is. It's one person knows where that stuff is or two people know where that stuff is. So it's not just a matter of, oh, everything's in that room. Where is it in that room? And who can find it? So tip number three is your information should be interconnected. You know, I don't want to sit and your team doesn't want to sit in front of a computer or a desktop and do searches all day. It's a complete waste of time. They're going to be digging through all these file folders that you see on the left here. Is that the right one? Then I got to click on it and there's 500 PDFs in there, and I got to dig through and try and figure out which one's the one I need. Well, great. It's none, it's none of those 500s. So now I got to click the next folder that has another 200 files in it. It's a waste of time. That's the way most folks consider digital. That's not digital. That's no different than you've got paper. Okay, if you can't find it, it's not doing you any good. So getting it digital, but getting it in a functioning way that you can find that information, it takes and gives that time back to you and your team. On average, a team is spending about an hour to an hour and a half per person per day 
walking back and forth from the field, digging through that paper, trying to find the stuff that they need to do their job. That's today. That's where a lot of folks are doing right now is they've got a bunch of stuff on a share drive and they can't find it anymore than they can find it in paper. Well, tip number four is use technology that doesn't require extensive training. So I cannot stress that enough. Nobody trained you how to use Google. Nobody trained you how to use Lyft or Uber or Yelp or any of the apps and, and programs that you use every in your day-to-day life. Facebook. Nobody trained me how to use Facebook. I just figured it out. Or LinkedIn. Nobody trained me how to use that. I just figured it out. So your technology shouldn't require extensive training. It should be easy to use. So think about the age demographic in your team. You've got younger folks. You've got some older folks. The older folks, if it's not easy, they're not going to use it. Well, that's everybody on your team. If the if the younger folks see that it's not easy, they're going to get frustrated just like the older folks on your team. Any technology we invest in today should be easy to use. Easy. Just like anything else that you're doing in your day-to-day life. So again, like I said, companies like Google and Apple, they develop their stuff specifically so that it does machine learning, but it's also really simple to use. They want the everyday man or woman to be able to use this every day without, with minimal training. That's what you've got to think about. So again, an intuitive user interface and positive user experience. You want your team to have something that they actually know that they're going to, it's going to help them do their job. That's in some, t- some of today's software, and I'll show a little bit of that later. But you don't want that guy. He's ripping his hair out, okay? He's fighting for time every day. He never has enough time to finish everything, and you don't have enough. You've got piles and piles of work orders that just come in, and things, projects that go on the back burner. Preventative maintenance doesn't get done because these folks are, are ripping their hair, hair out trying to get stuff done. Imagine giving them some time back so they can access it with what's in their pocket, their phone. Well, tip number five is avoid custom software. Cannot stress this enough. Custom software can be a giant money pit. It's an expensive process. It's always expensive. But then it also takes a long time to build that out. There's development time. There's also just you know, back and forth with you, making sure things work properly, back and forth, back and forth. But here's the problem. By the time you build out a custom solution, you're going to have changes before it's fully implemented. I hear this is a, a, a recurring theme I hear over and over and over again. We, we, went out, we got this great custom. It's perfect for us. Great. How many times did you change it? Was it on budget? 100% of the time, it's no. 100% of the time I hear is no. It was more than we originally anticipated, and we still don't have it fully implemented, and we've already got new changes. That's a trifecta right there. That is a money pit right there. Buy stuff that you lean on best practices and utilize stuff that other folks in the industry are doing. You know, your CMMS can't do everything. You know, your, your BIM solution can't do everything. It's just not going to happen. But you've got to have solutions where they're, everything's interconnected, everything talks, everything communicates, and you can access the stuff to do your job when you need it. So mobile apps allow us to access information quickly and efficiently from anywhere, anytime. It's a game changer. Even in the facilities world, it is a game changer. Think about all the technologies that you're using right now. Think about all the systems that you're using right now. Do they have apps? Do they have mobile access to that? Not just through a browser. Do you have mobile access through an app? Do you have mobile access wherever the heck you're on the roof, you're in the basement? Do you have access to your stuff? That's what you've got to ask yourself. That becomes a game changer when that happens. So how do facilities teams avoid getting left behind? Embrace technology. Embrace mobile. 
Embrace what's in every single person's pocket. I don't care if you're at home today or you're at the office today. You all have a smartphone. Everybody has a smartphone. Everybody has access to th their phone. It's, it's a game changer. But there's a new approach. And that, again, is instant access to building and equipment information on your phone. You should have access to all of it, no matter where you are. Now I'm going to show you a little demo here, but it's as-built maps, shutoffs, and equipment mapping. I'm going to show you how that can really impact you and give you kind of an idea of what that could look like for you and your team. So again, this is my, my iPad here, but you can see I've got a bunch of apps. I use these all the time, but I use this in my day-to-day -day life. And again, remember what I said at the beginning is everybody is using these. Everybody uses this stuff all the time. But if I click on the app in the bottom right, here's what it could look like for your building. This is an example of a hospital. So this is a Valley Medical, and this is just a demo, but I'm going to show you what that could look like even in a hospital setting. So you click on your buildings button here, and it goes to a campus map. You've got all your buildings called out. Let's click on building four here. And you've got as-built list view and as-built map view. Well, the as-built list view is all the different projects that have ever happened in this particular building for, all of them. And you can see there's a date, and then it says a little description of what it is. But this list here doesn't tell me what part of the building these renovations touched. It just said it touched the building. It doesn't even tell me what floor. I have to click on each individual one. This is a step up from having it on a share drive, but I can click on the top one here and it goes to the index of draw, uh, this uh, sheet index and I can click on any sheet in this highlighted area here and it goes to the particular sheet and it goes to the details are all highlighted and you click on a detail and it goes straight to the detail. That's how fast I can drill down. So now I don't have to drill down through that 300 sheets or 300 PDFs that are in that drop down file folder that's on my desktop. I just push buttons. I'm literally pinching, swiping, tapping on my screen here to get to whatever the heck I need. That's how fast I can drill down. But again, that list doesn't show me what parts of the building something touched. All it says is that was a renovation or that was an original set of drawings for, for that building. But it doesn't tell me what floor. It doesn't tell me where it touched that building. Well, that's that second button, as built map view. Let's go to our first floor. This system actually, our system actually overlays and maps out and shows you where all those renovations touched in the building year over year. So say I've got something I'm working on in this part of the building. I can see here's a drawing set at the top here from 1972 a triage reception, and then I can see here's one from 2000. Well, I'm going to click on the newest, click on it, and it takes me to that drawing set. Every sheet in the index is linked. Click on a sheet. It takes me right to the sheet. That fast. A couple of seconds, I just drilled down in there, and I can switch from sheet to sheet at the bottom down here in the bottom left just by pushing the arrow. I'm toggling between sheets here. That fast. That's how fast you can access all of your building drawings in just a couple of clicks. You're there. You know exactly where you're at. And I can do this on my phone. I can do this in the field. I can do this on the roof. I can do this on the fourth floor in the, in the uh, surgical unit. I can do it wherever the heck I am in the building. Or I can do it toggle between buildings. It's really fast. Well, now let's talk about equipment. So think about all the equipment you've got in your building. And I'm talking about capital equipment. So your HVAC units, your, your chillers, all the different stuff you've got in your building is, is all over the place. Well, I'm the new guy. I just started yesterday. I don't know where all your stuff is. Okay. And now you're working from home. I'm the new guy. So I'm the one who's standing in the office. I don't know where the equipment is. I click on our equipment maps. Let's go to our first floor here. And you can see I've got different types of equipment here. Let me click our little drop down here. 
and you see I've got different types of equipment here and I can turn them off and on. But if I want to see information about a particular, uh, let's do this air handler down here, and I can see there's a piece of equipment attached to it, and this is AHU-19. Great, now I know where that AHU-19 is, I know what room it's in, and I can click on it, and you can see I've got different information attached to this pin for that particular machine. So I can see there's some inspection forms, there's some linked files that could be an o and M. I've got a parts, different parts associated with that. There's a control board, okay? But you can see all this information is now right there. And I can also generate a QR code and attach it to that machine. So the next time I walk up to that machine, I pull my phone out of my pocket, scan that QR code, and it takes me right to here that shows me all the information about that machine. That fast. That's one way. Well, let's look at another way that you can also find some equipment here. Let's go to our equipment button here. Okay, and let's do a search for AHU. Okay, I'm just going to search for AHU, and you can see here's AHU 19 down here. Click on it, I get to the same spot. But say I start here, and I'm just doing a search for that equipment. I don't know exactly where that is. I'm, that, I'm the new guy again. I don't know where that piece of equipment is. I can see, well, here it's building for first floor orthopedics. You see that little map down there? You click on that map takes me right to it on that particular plan set that fast. I'm again, I'm the new person. I've never been in your, I've brand new to your building. I can find that piece of equipment that fast. And then you've also got, you've got different tags in the, um, you've got different tags here at the bottom and back out here at the bottom here, you can see these are like shortcuts. So this is uh, tags that you can add to each piece of equipment to really narrow your search down fast. So that's a way you can find a couple of, a couple of different ways you can find equipment. But then you've also got emergencies happen in your building. I mentioned earlier there was a pipe burst in one of the buildings that I was in. And again, a 10 inch water pipe. I mean, just do the math there. Think about how much water just dumped in there. What was three days for them to fix it? I mean, tile, they're ripping up tile, they were replacing drywall, it was just a mess. But I need to access all of my emergency information just as fast as I do, if not faster, than I do my blueprints. So let's click on our emergency button here. We go, go building four here, and I want to find shutoffs. So the first floor. Let's find this shutoff up here in the upper right-hand corner. Click on it. There's even instructions how to shut it off that fast. A couple of clicks and I just found exactly where that shut off was, how to shut it off in just a couple of clicks. And you can add photos, you can add video to this. Everything is right here. And in this case, we actually put a linked file. A client actually had zone maps showing where those shut off. We can attach those or you can attach those directly to that particular pin showing exactly where that shuts off. That's a game changer. Helps you react faster when something's going sideways in your building. Well, you can also find equipment or emergency information about all your other emergency equipment in the building here too. And again, I've got all this information here. You can search by cameras or defibrillators. I want to see where all this is. And you can turn these off and on. Let's hide them all. And let's turn on just our cameras. Well, all these cameras, again, with everything that's going on, I'm working remote. You could even have links to a particular camera on your site and drill down here and hit this little useful link button. This is going to take just a second to load, but you can pull up a live feed of a video camera from your house. Okay, that's a live feed of a camera. Somebody's out on the streets there, but those streets are usually bare. Okay, right now, especially. But again, you can access all of this information from home, where you're sitting right now. Because of where we're at today, mobile, you can access any of your information in just a couple of clicks here, fast. I can also access any of my, my uh, emergency plans, my overall emergency plan, evacuation routes, safe refuge areas. If you've got triage, center set up or 
you've got a particular area of your, your, your hospital that's quarantined. You could have that linked in here. And we actually recently just added this COVID-19 resources tab to every one of our clients. And we're also doing this for anybody who, is, uh, who has demos uh, with us. And these are important links to the World Health Organization, CDC. These are links to videos, all of these resources for particular uh, with this epidemic or with this pandemic right now, you can access all those resources right there. And we even uh, we have signage down here from the CDC as well that you can actually order um, prints of of actual wayfinding signage. Go down this hallway, or here's the CDC guidelines for what you need to do. But at the end of the day, like I was saying here, accessing all of the information for your buildings. All of it in one spot is really simple. You've got to take those steps, though. You've got to you've got to get your stuff digital. You have to really focus on getting digital and a move forward plan. It's that's the first step. And Dara, do we have any questions that have come in? Yep. Hey, David. Um, yes. Uh, let me go ahead. The first one I have here is. So what is the best way for us to get our paper documents digitized? Oh, sure. That's, that's a great question. Get it digitized with somebody who can also take it to the next step. They has a process where they scan the information. We have, we have 170 service centers in the U.S. They can scan that information in and then make it actionable. So scan it, OCR it. Optical character recognition. We actually have patented software that reads large format sheets. So read your blueprints and OCR is the blueprint. So now they're searchable. So it reads the title block, picks up other details that are in the sheet itself. But make sure whoever scans it can do that, that can get that stuff digital so that you guys can now turn it into an actionable item and access it. Thanks, David. Next question yeah. I have here is, what is your advice for organizations using custom software because they have not been able to find a good fit with any industry software? How do you find and maintain the right tools? I think that the best way is to really identify your wish list and then also identify, stack rank your items on your list. What, what are you using now? You really have to identify what you're using now, what's working, what's not working, and then also identify the gaps between them. I, that wish list should not just be, I wish we had something that did all of this stuff, because it's probably not going to happen. But you can stack rank those and then really identify where stuff fits into those holes, but then also the gaps in between them. So identifying what your, your immediate needs are, what are your long-term needs, and then really figure out, uh, sit down with some consultants. We do that all the time. Sit down and really have uh, brainstorming sessions to figure out what things you're doing now, what are things that are working really well, and not just rip a Band-Aid off. And like, like I said in one of the slides, a custom solution, if you're doing a complete custom solution, a complete build from scratch, just write a blank check because that's what that means. You're never going to have and check off all the boxes that you think you're going to be able to check off. It's not going to happen. And even if you did, it's going to change 50 times by the time you're actually, and I'm using air quotes here, done. Because you're never done. It's always got to be able to evolve. So mobile first when it comes to technology, to make sure that those, those applications that you're looking at are mobile first, not just desktop. If, you're tied, if your butt's tied to a chair, you're not mobile. If you have, can only access it from a, a desktop, or a laptop, you're not you're not necessarily mobile. Laptops are not mobile. If laptops, you got to send it down someplace. I can pull my phone out of my pocket and access stuff. That's what you need. Thanks, David. We're we're uh, we're we're getting ready to wrap up here, but I'm going to ask one last question that we got in. Um, can you provide any recommendation on how we can get management approval for this type of software? Certainly, certainly. Um, Management cares about efficiency. Management also cares about long-term efficiency. So you got to think about where, whatever you're going to pitch to your boss. You know, we, we get involved in those meetings typically. We, we are sitting across the table from their boss and help building that case. 
Because at the end of the day, you have to have a partner that's not sitting across the table from you, that's sitting on the same side of the table as you. You have to be able to work together to really get show the true value of, of why something makes sense. And it's efficiency through time savings. It's efficiency through you can do more preventative maintenance. Those are, those are keys for any C-level that's going to want to look at a new, or if you're looking at a new software, is what's my return? If your return is not just time, but now I can do more of my preventative maintenance tasks. I can get more work orders done. That's valuable to them because that means you're being more efficient. It's not talking about reducing headcount. It's, no, you can do more, you can do more from with your people, and now you're not adding to that team. You get more out of the people you have. That's huge. All right, thanks, David. One last question, and we are going to wrap up. Are there any levels of access? Can the app, uh, can the app be set up so that other, uh, others can access different levels of data they, that they view? Is the data printable? Yes, yeah, you can control, well, through our app, you can control who can do and see what. So you set those parameters. You're actually the admin. So you're the super user. And we do a, oftentimes we do a train the trainer uh, angle because it works. You know, we're there for our clients no matter what, but they, we found that the train the trainer model is a huge, huge step where you've got a couple of super users or maybe it's one super user and then they train the other folks. And you control because not everybody needs to see everything. They just need to, and they don't necessarily care about all the, 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 the stuff in your building. They care about a subset thereof. You can do that. Great. Thank you, David. Um, we are going to wrap up now. Uh, for any questions we didn't get to, we will definitely uh, reach out individually. And I want to thank everyone for taking the time to be here today. We really appreciate it. We, uh, we will follow up with a, a, an email uh, to all registrants in early next week. So please take a, keep a lookout for that. And if you have any further questions, um, you, you got David's email here on the slide, david.trask at arcfacilities.com. We also have solutions at arcfacilities.com. So um, we look forward to hearing any questions that you have and we'll be following up. And I appreciate everyone being here today. So stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you.